Hey guys, today I'm going to provide a better response to a wonderful article by Mark Wilson on Fast Company Design called The ThinkPad is the last thing but overrated design with the wonderful subtitle Seriously, who still uses that written up? But before I give my response, let's read the article together. In 1992, all-star industrial designer Richard Sapper created what would become the most time-honored design of his career, the IBM ThinkPad laptop. Starkly modeled after a cigar box, it opened to reveal a surprise, a whole computer hiding inside, and it directly inspired the ThinkPad model 700C, which became IBM's icon, with one bright red button known as a trackpoint knob. The trackpoint sat inside the keyboard to aim the mouse, while a right and left mouse button lived below the, su the spacebar. The design engineering was ingenious, allowing you to mouse around without removing your hands from the keyboard, squeezing a lot of control into a small form factor at a time when the bare idea of what a laptop was had barely been defined. The Novo purchased the ThinkPad brand from IBM in 2005, and to this day it has a loyal following that will wax poetic about its durability and timeless design. The following may be too loyal, because decades of hardware innovations have come and gone, opening up all sorts of new ways to build and control a laptop. The ThinkPad of today accommodates all of the old school trackpoint users by keeping that red knob in the keyboard and it also has a trackpad beneath because trackpads are what 99% of laptop users would prefer to use. Yes, that means there are two complete mouse setups on the ThinkPads of today. It's ludicrous because there's a reason Lenovo has done this. When the company toyed with this design in 2014, not even daring to eliminate the track point, but to consolidate its left and right mouse buttons into one long bar, the company was accused of pseudonymy, became the subject of message board rants, and was disgraced on YouTube. Lenovo catered to user demands and changed things back this year. Zapper's design was unparalleled in 1992. But times have changed. We have touchpads and touchscreens that can distinguish how many fingers you're clicking with. We have IR cameras that can see your gestures on air or in air, should I say. We have many more options than we used to. And as comfortable as rubbing that old red nerve might be, it's time for ThinkPad users to think bigger, to push Lenovo to make a true spiritual successor that's worthy of the name 25 years later. The OK OK, the ThinkPad Zapper design in 2012 was a real looker, but silly ThinkPad fans just complained about that too. I strongly disagree with the statements you made in your article, Mark. The track point is not overrated at all and neither is ThinkPad design. ThinkPad design is a complete opposite of overrated. It is underrated. To answer your question of who still uses that red nub, I do. I use it all the time, and I know plenty of people who use it too. It is extremely useful in my everyday life. I work with music. I am an upcoming producer slash DJ by the way, and the track point is invaluable in an area where I have where I have to adjust knobs and sliders, among various other things, with precision. I also work with Photoshop and Illustrator, among other forms of visual art slash design, where I also need precision. I love how I don't need to take my hands off the keyboard. That part where you said the design was ingenious, allowing you to mouse around without removing your hands from the keyboard. That's exactly the reason why we love and still use the track point. Using a touchpad in these areas is very inefficient. I have made countless errors where my work was either ruined or almost ruined. Touchpads are very clunky and frustrating to work with. 
I absolutely cannot stand them. I've been a ThinkPad loyalist since I was in my pre-teens. I, I first got to use a ThinkPad in, tw in 2000 2003 w when I was 13 and I thought that adjusting to the, to the track point would be difficult but to my surprise it only took me a few minutes if not a few seconds. I got my, my very first ThinkPad, which also happens to be my very first laptop the following year. And I have accumulated more ThinkPads in my collection ever since then. And I, I, I want to have a huge collection of ThinkPads. So if you didn't guess already, I'm a ThinkPad collector. As for the design of the ThinkPad itself, it is rugged and timeless. Just like a BMW, Porsche, Mercedes-Benz, or a tank. It is functional and elegant. It is built for professionals. I've dropped my ThinkPads many, many times, and they still work. I've, I have not had any issues with them whatsoever. They are really, really reliable. They have, they have to pass mil spec testing before they go into production. And let's not forget about that iconic keyboard. It is very comfortable to type on. Regardless of whether you have and or prefer the classic 7-row keyboard or, or the modern 6-row island-style keyboard. So as you can see, ThinkPads have very high standards, unlike other brands. I suggest you educate yourself on ThinkPad history and its design philosophy. I will also go as far as to suggest that you try out a ThinkPad for yourself. Use it for at least a few to several months and only use the track point. In fact, I challenge you to do that. Through your education of ThinkPad history, you're going to find out that ThinkPads came up with all sorts of innovations and paved the way for others to follow. ThinkPad defined the laptop. You want to know what design is overrated? Apple. Apple's design sacrifices functionality for vanity. You clearly have no taste in good design. This article is a disgrace, not just to ThinkPad and its supporters, but to design as well. It is comical, so much that I just couldn't help myself but laugh while reading it, particularly towards the end. That part where it said, and as comfortable as rubbing that old red nub might be, sounded so erotic that I could have sworn that I almost got a boner. You say that we have many more options than we used to. Then how come you're bashing the track point? You also say that ThinkPads have trackpads we need because trackpads are what 99% of users will prefer to use. So what? Just because most people use or do something doesn't mean it's good. Then you, you go on to say how ludicrous it is that there are two complete mouse setups on today's ThinkPad. No, what's ludicrous is you basically saying that people shouldn't have choices. Having the option of having two pointing devices, and I guess three if you count touchscreens, that right there, it's a good thing. It's, it's called having choices. And I don't see how having choices is supposed to be a bad thing. When you said that ThinkPad has a loyal following, you also said that that following may be too loyal. Um, no. I think that loyal following is just about right. Towards the end of your last paragraph, you say, It's time for ThinkPad users to think bigger, to push Lenovo to make a true spiritual success successor that's worthy of the name 25 years later. You want to take a guess at who's the one who's not thinking big? Because it's certainly not us. There's a reason why we're called doers and why Lenovo's slogan is for those who do. And also, you've got any bright ideas, genius? I'm sure your head is full of ideas. Come on now, let's hear them. Um, what's that? You don't got any. I thought so. Then, there's the very last part of your article. But silly ThinkPad fans just complained about that referring to the to the X1 Carbon Gen 3 too. Okay, here's an instance where I feel the need to stand up for and not to old school think patterns. I don't normally agree with the old with the old schoolers because 
a lot of the times I think they're they're being close minded about modern modern thing packs and find them a bit annoying at times. But this is a time where I have to put our differences aside and stand up for them because this affects all ThinkPad lovers. The reason why they're complaining is because some keyboard features on the X1 Carbon Gen 3 are gone and they say they need these features. Personally, I think I think they're not giving it a, a chance and that they're not giving themselves enough time to adapt, but we'll see what comes out of it. The problem is the majority of people don't need these these features, which is why Lenovo got rid of them. A lot of the people who are complaining are old school think patterns that are also programmers and a lot of them have been around since the very early days of the ThinkPad. You also go on to call them silly. So they're silly because they, just like the rest of us, want ThinkPad to be the best it can be. Guess who's the one who's being silly around here? Because it's not them, it's not me, and it's certainly not anyone else. By the way, the article he links to in that sentence is basically just a sensationalist bullshit article that highlights the things that some of these think patterns don't like. It is pretty disgusting and takes advantage of these books just to make a quick buck. So read it only if you can stomach that type of thing. If you thought that was the end of it, I have news for you. There's more. It turns out that this clown wrote another article called The World's Most Overrated Product Design. And guess what? The ThinkPad makes an appearance. Yay! Just awesome. The article goes on to say, In a technological world where everything changes, this landmark laptop designed by Richard Sapper has gone relatively unaltered since it was first released in 1990. First of all, the ThinkPad was released in 1992. And second of all, how is that supposed to be a bad thing? So I suppose you're going to go on to say the same thing about the Porsche 911 next? In fact, you might as well just say it. Come on, just say it. The Porsche 911 is a lasting but overrated design. There, I helped you out. Now go ahead and say it. You might as well write your next article about how that is overrated. And FYI, the design has over time been refined. So technically, it's been altered if you can even call it that. In fact, ThinkPads are very adaptable and have withstood the test of time, unlike other brands. Tell me of another laptop brand that has done that. And yes, I challenge you to that. Change for the sake of change is not smart. Change for the sake of following trends and being hip and cool is not very smart. If you are going to change anything, it has to be functional. It has to be for a good reason. Mark. You're a clown. You're bashing something just because you don't understand it. You're bashing something just because it's not shiny or cool or hip. You're basically just saying that ThinkPad design is overrated because it just is according to your ideology. Your article is a joke. I really don't appreciate the fact that you're bashing my best friends. And I'm not just talking about my fellow ThinkPad loyalists. And to think that this was published on a design website. And FYI, the ThinkPad was inspired by, by the bento box, which is a Japanese lunchbox, even though the cigar box played a bit of a role. So yeah, there you have it, folks. That's my response to Mark Wilson's great, wonderful article. If you like this video, go ahead and thumbs it up, share it, and follow me on social media and subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. Like a full frontal assault.